Hello and welcome to Kla TV. Today we'll take a closer look at the usual war rhetoric of the mainstream media against Vladimir Putin, examining carefully statements of the former US Minister of Foreign Affairs, Hillary Clinton, which she made to the German newspaper Bild am Sonntag on the 6th of July 2014. In comparison, we allow Vladimir Putin's voice to be heard through film cuts of his speech to Russian diplomats and ambassadors on the 1st of July in Moscow's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. First of all, let's come back to the wife of ex-president Bill Clinton and possible Democratic candidate for the US presidency in 2016. Clinton's first war rhetoric concerning Putin? I believe he can be dangerous. A man like Putin always goes to the limits. Already formulating this as a possibility without any sound evidence to back this judgment shows how the readers are purposefully agitated. Without any further explanations, the mainstream media publish this quote by the dozens. Discern yourselves if Putin is going to the limits and to what extent his words are justified or come across as dangerous. The second war rhetoric from Clinton in view of the annexation of the Crimean Peninsula by Russia. We cannot allow that a political leader draws new borders for Europe after the Second World War. Remember that nearly 97% of the people of the Crimean Peninsula voted in the referendum, which they themselves launched, for joining the Russian Federation. Following this, the accession request was accepted by Moscow which, according to international law expert Reinhard Merkel, was not violating international law in any way. And even a few years ago, the same issue involving Kosovo received worldwide acceptance. Please judge for yourself what should be allowed or not. The third war rhetoric from Hillary Clinton. She challenged the West to a decisive proceeding for the most recent aggression from Kremlin boss Vladimir Putin must be answered unanimously. Valued viewers, decide for yourselves if President Putin's words at the close of this broadcast come across as aggression or simply the right to defend oneself. Currently, while the situation becomes more and more critical, NATO and Russia have begun military maneuvers on the Black Sea. Ships from the USA, Turkey, Britain, Italy, Greece, Bulgaria and Romania are involved. With this I say goodbye and wish you relaxed listening to the film cut of Vladimir Putin's statements. Keep in mind, according to Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, one only sees well with the heart. The speech can be found in full-length, 12-minute version on the link below. Goodbye. You yourselves know how quickly, dynamically and often unpredictably the international situation develops. Events are literally packed together in time and unfortunately many of these events are far from positive in character. The potential for conflict or war in the world is growing continually. Old disaccord is being filed upon and new disaccord is being provoked. Often we face new disaccord unexpectedly. And unfortunately we are forced to watch how international law does not function. Not even the elemental norms of decency are heeded. International arbitrary force dominates. In Ukraine, as you have observed yourselves, our fellow countrymen are in danger. Russian people, as well as people of other nationalities whose language, history, culture and legitimate human rights are guaranteed by European standards are in danger. 
When I say Russian people or Russian-speaking people in Ukraine, then I mean the people who consider themselves to be Russian and feel they are a part of the Russian world. These are not necessarily ethnic Russians, but all those who feel they are Russian. Which reaction did our partner expect from us in view of these developments and events in Ukraine? We could not allow that our access to the Black Sea be substantially restricted, that NATO troops come into the Crimean Peninsula and Sevastopol, a region distinguished historically by the renown of the Russian Navy. And I think that this would happen quite fast. This would cause the balance of powers on the Black Sea to be fundamentally changed. And ultimately that would mean everything which Russia fought for in this region since the time of Peter the Great and still further back, the historians amongst you know, would be nullified if NATO came in. I want to make it very clear that Russia will continue to energetically defend the rights of Russian countrymen living in foreign countries. For this purpose we will use everything possible in our arsenal of possibilities from political and economic means to humanitarian intervention, which is according to international law included in these means, and our legitimate right to self-defense. Peoples and countries are resolutely and more and more loudly engaging themselves to be able to determine their own fate and to be able to preserve their own historical and cultural identity as a civilization, and this collides with the attempts of certain countries to maintain and further their global dominance in the areas of military power, politics, finance, economics and ideology. You know, for example, to illustrate this, what is being done with the French banks, it doesn't directly affect us, but with the exception of a few waves of indignation in Europe and here in Russia, nothing is going to be done about it. For we know what pressure our American partners are putting on France in order that they do not deliver the ordered Mistral Navy ships to Russia. And we know that when these ships are not delivered to Russia, that then the US sanctions against the banks will be revoked or at least minimized. But what is this if not extortion, blackmail? How can one work on the international stage this way? Aside from this, when we talk about sanctions, we always assume that the sanctions may only be effected in accordance with the Article 7 of the UN Charta. Or are these not even sanctions on the terms of international law, but something totally different, an instrument of one-sided politics? The past two decades our partners have tried to convince us of peaceful intentions with Russia and that they are prepared to work together towards building a strategic partnership. Yet parallel to this, NATO expansion was continued towards the east and NATO militarized and politically controlled territory advanced continually closer towards Russia's borders. To our rightful and legitimate question, would it not be right to discuss and consult with us about this NATO expansion issue, we only received the answer, no, it is not your business. Those who continue to declare their singularity do not like the independent sovereign politics of Russia. One should finally start to build relationships on the basis of equal rights and mutual respect and reconciliation of interests. It is time to recognize and grant each other the right to be different from each other, the right of every country to autonomously fashion its own way of life and not under imposed foreign power. Our contacts to the United States of America have great importance for the entire world. We do not intend to end any of these contacts. Our relationships to the USA are not in the best shape today, it is true. But the deterioration of our relationship with the USA, and I want to especially emphasize this, is not our fault. Russia is not guilty in this. We always made an effort to be an accountable and predictable partner for the other side. Our wish was always to negotiate on the basis of equal rights and at eye level. But in response, our legitimate interests were often neglected or ignored.